We get to try dividing polynomials. Yuck. All right. So what we're going to do today is just learn a bit of a long division. All right. Now I know that it's been about five or six years since you've probably even bothered to use long division. Um, and so, so this might seem a little, uh, a little bit cumbersome at first, but I, I trust it will be all right. Uh, there are two, uh, two key questions. Uh, that we're going to ask. First of all, what happens when you divide a polynomial by another? Um, and the second is wondering if, a, um, if an expression is a factor of a polynomial. All right, so, so we're going to address division in, in two different ways. Uh, so the first starts with this polynomial, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x minus 8 is divided by x minus 4. The approach that we're going to take here is, is the, the long division approach. So it's not, it's, it's not going to be fun necessarily. It's going to take up a lot of space on our papers. Um, but the work shouldn't be too terribly difficult. What we want to do is, is not necessarily ignore this negative 4. But what we like to do is look at this and say, how many times does this go in to uh, 2x cubed? Another way to say that is, what is 2x cubed divided by just x. All right? Now I know that we're dividing by x minus 4 and we'll account for that as we, um, as we do our long division. But how many times does 2x cubed go into, uh, or, or what happens when we have 2x cubed divided by x? We get 2x squared. Now when you did long division you would say, so how many times does this go into that? Oh, that many times. So 2x squared times x would give us a 2x cubed. And 2x squared times negative 4, we've got to address both of the terms here. 2x squared times negative 4 gives us a negative 8x squared. Now what we do is we take this and we subtract. All right, that stuff in blue there, you might not need to write as long as you understand that you're subtracting. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed makes 0. Negative 3x squared minus negative 8x squared makes a positive 5x squared. All right. Now, the next part here is, uh, it's, it might vary from exercise to exercise. But what we would do is bring down this term here. All right. And we're still asking, how many times does x go into 5x squared? Or, conversely, what is 5x squared divided by x? Well, we're going to say that that is 5x's. Right? 5x times x makes 5x squared. 5x times negative 4 makes negative 20x's. And again, we're subtracting. Now, I'm not going to write the minus parenthetical here. I'm just going to subtract vertically. This gives me 0. Negative 18x minus negative 20x makes a positive 2x's. All right, and of course we bring down that negative 8. And you can bring all of these down here if you want. It, it's, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but we're going to bring down that negative 8, and we're going to ask the question, what is 2x divided by x? Or how many times does x go into 2x's? It goes in twice. So multiply by 2, 2x's times negative 4, so 2 times negative 4 gives me negative 8. And when I subtract these, 2x minus 2x, I get 0. Negative 8 minus negative 8 makes 0. That means I have no remainder here. No remainder. When I do this division of this polynomial, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x minus 8, divided by x minus 4, I get this polynomial with no remainder. All right, that means that this divides Perfectly, I can say that 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x minus 8 divided by x minus 4 is equal to 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. That is how you do long division with polynomials. All right, now, the key here is knowing that you are subtracting each time. Subtracting. The most common mistakes that you're going to make is, is uh, not subtracting your negatives correctly. That's going to be your most common mistake. Um, does it happen to me? Sure, from time to time. All right, but I'm 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 a little bit better at, at this than um, uh, the most of us in the room. I'm guessing. All right, so so we're gonna we're gonna do some subtraction. Uh, subtraction that involves negatives. Subtraction that involves positives. Again, we always want to make this be zero. 
this be zero. And if this ends up with a remainder of zero, then that means that this divides perfectly. That means that we can rewrite this. And here's another way to think about this. If I know that when I divide this by that, that this is my quotient, I can write, um, write this expression, uh, in, or I can write this in factored form. I can say that, uh, that 2x cubed, and I don't, I don't want to compress this too much, but, uh, but, but I'm going to. Let's go ahead and, and uh, I'll just write it down here. I can say that 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x minus 8 is equal to x minus 4 multiplied by 2x squared plus 5x's plus 2. Alright, so we can actually rewrite this polynomial in its factored form. Um, and then what we would want to think about is, uh, can that be factored further? And it turns out that this could be factored further. We can fact find factors of 4 that add up to 5. Right? That would be uh, 4 and 1. And so, um, and so that could be factored further. That can help us find the zeros of a polynomial function y equals this here. We can end up solving this. When does 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x minus 8 equals 0? Well, looking at the factored form, we can find out where those uh, where, uh, where the solutions to that equation um, would be. All right, so this is going to take a turn when we go on to the, the next section here. But, um, but, but first, what I wanted to do is just make sure that we can do this long division. We will do another example over here. Uh, 6.3.2 says, is x plus 1 a factor of x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. All right, so to determine if it's a factor, is it a factor? What I'm saying is, or what the question's asking is, when you divide that, do you get a remainder of 0? If you divide it and your remainder is not 0, then it's not a factor. All right, it's divided by, but there's something left over. So it's not a perfect factor. It's not going to work out nice and, nice and pretty like this. So let's take a look. What happens when I divide? Oops, this is blue. What happens when I divide x cubed plus 4x squared minus x, I'm sorry, plus x minus 6 divided by x plus 1? I'm going to find x cubed divided by x gives me x squared. When I multiply x squared times x plus 1, I get x cubed plus x squared. When I subtract, I get 3x squared. Bring down that x. How many times, or, or what is the ratio of 3x squared over x? That gives me 3x's. When I multiply 3x's times x, I get 3x squared. 3x times 1 gives me 3x's. Subtract, remember, that makes 0. That makes negative 2x's. Bring this down, minus 6. Negative 2 times x. Negative 2 times x gives me a negative 2x's. Negative 2 times 1 gives me a negative 2. You can tell that this is not going to give me 0. Negative 6 divided, I'm sorry, negative 6 minus negative 2 is going to be a negative 4. Uh-oh. And there is nothing that I can multiply x by to get negative 4. All right, there's, I can't say 1 times x, that would give me x. I can't say 0 times x, because that would give me 0. There is no number that I can multiply um, uh, by... Um, by x to get negative 4, unless it's an expression that involves x. So there's a couple ways that we can write this. Here's how uh, I prefer to write this. I prefer to go ahead and just say that when I divide x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6 by x plus 1, I get x squared plus 3x minus 2 with a remainder of negative 4. All right? And that's all that you need to do. What I want for you to understand, however, and this is going to, you're going to have to think back to fifth and sixth grade when you first learned long division. When there's a remainder of, of anything, when you're doing any sort of division, what's remaining is actually part of this. So when I say there's a remainder of negative four, that means that I, I have actually an additional fraction. I have plus this fraction negative 4 over x plus 1. That's what a remainder of 4 means. I mean, it means I've got, I've got negative 4 left out of, out of, out of this expression. Um, and that looks a bit crazy, and we'll deal with that stuff in, in, in much later chapters. So I don't want to confuse you by, by write, having you write like this. Instead, we're just going to write a remainder of, uh, of negative 4. 
So here's the question. We did our long division. When I did this, I got a zero. So I could rewrite this as, oh, x minus 4 is a factor of this polynomial. x minus 4 times that quotient gives me this polynomial. Over here, if I were to take um, x plus 1 times this, I wouldn't get this guy. All right, because I had to multiply it by this and my remainder of negative 4. So since there is a remainder, is x plus 1 a factor of this polynomial? No, it's not. And I don't know if that showed up on the screen. Uh, OK, barely did. OK, so no, it is not because there is a remainder. All right, there's a remainder of negative 4. If there's a remainder of anything, uh, then it is, then, then this uh, factor, um, or I'm sorry, then this uh, polynomial is not a factor of this polynomial. Right? So if there's any remainder, it is not a factor.